Hello, friends, and welcome to another midweek meditation. Before I take us to this week's passage, I want you to know that next week I will be attending a classes meeting, and I therefore will not be providing a meditation. But I do hope you will join us two weeks from now. Our passage today is Revelation chapter 19, verses 6 through 10, and it's an awesome, beautiful passage. I will read it, and then I will explain. Then I heard what seemed to be the voice of a great multitude, like the roar of many waters and like the sound of mighty pearls of thunder, crying out, Hallelujah! For the Lord our God, the Almighty, reigns. Let us rejoice and exalt and give Him the glory, for the marriage of the Lamb has come, and His bride has made herself ready. It was granted her to clothe herself with fine linen, bright and pure." For the fine linen is the righteous deeds of the saints. And the angel said to me, Write this, Blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said to me, These are the true words of God. Then I fell down at his feet to worship him. But he said to me, You must not do that. I am a fellow servant with you and your brothers who hold to the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. In this passage, we see a marriage and a marriage supper. And this is the most important marriage that will ever occur because Jesus is the groom. He is the lamb mentioned in verse 7. How do we know Jesus is the Lamb? Well, we've already seen him mentioned as the Lamb several times in the book of Revelation. For instance, here is what we read in Revelation chapter 5. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. Jesus is the one who was slain. Therefore, Jesus is the Lamb and therefore Jesus is the groom. Now, what about the bride, you might wonder? Who is she? Well, we know from several Old Testament passages and from an excellent New Testament passage that the bride is the church. The bride is all believers, all Christians. Here's a passage from the Old Testament. This is Isaiah chapter 54, verses 5 and 6. For your maker is your husband, The Lord of hosts is his name, and the Holy One of Israel is your Redeemer, the God of the whole earth he is called. For the Lord has called you like a wife, deserted and grieved in spirit. The Lord is the groom. And in Ephesians chapter 5 we read, Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word, so that he might present the church to himself in splendor, without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she might be holy and without blemish. Those verses are very connected to the verses that we're reading in the book of Revelation. So the groom is Christ Jesus, and the bride is the church. Now, When the Apostle John saw this vision, there were marriage customs in Israel we need to understand in order that we might better appreciate the vision. The marriage process began with betrothal. You might remember that Mary was betrothed to Joseph. Betrothal was like our engagement today, but it was much more legally binding. Betrothal took place before God and witnesses, much like a marriage ceremony does today. Therefore, the only way that relationship could end was divorce. You might remember that Joseph considered divorcing Mary when he found out she was pregnant. The man and the woman were not yet together, but they were legally bound to one another. They were, in that sense, already husband and wife. After the betrothal, there was a time of waiting. 
and during that time, the groom paid a dowry for the bride. Sometimes that dowry was paid with active service, and therefore that, that uh, time of waiting was for various lengths of time. After the time of waiting, the next big event was the procession. The procession was not down a short little aisle like it is today. It went down city streets between the home of the bride and the home of the groom, so it could be quite a long walk. The groom would get ready in his home, the bride would get ready in her home, and when ready, the groom, along with his attendants, would go to the home of the bride in order to pick up his wife. And then that procession would start down the city streets. If it occurred at night, they would carry torches of light with them. Once they got to the home of the groom, then there was a wedding feast, a large festival that lasted up to seven days. Now, with that custom in mind, I want to read to you what William Hendrickson has written in his book, More Than Conquerors. Throughout the entire Old Testament dispensation, the wedding was announced. Next, the Son of God assumed our flesh and blood. The betrothal took place. The price, the dowry, was paid on Calvary. And now, after an interval which in the eyes of God is but a little while, the bridegroom returns, and it has come, the wedding of the Lamb. I think Hendrickson is right. The first advent of Jesus was the betrothal. And the second advent of Jesus will be the procession. Jesus, along with his angels, will come down on the clouds to get we, his bride, the church. And then the wedding feast will occur. And that will be awesome. So that's what we're waiting for. We're waiting for the procession and the wedding feast. Now, while we're waiting, notice what this passage says the bride has been granted. Verse 8 says, It was granted her to clothe herself with fine linen, bright and pure, for the fine linen is the righteous deeds of the saints. Dear friends, our wedding dress is righteousness, and it is a righteousness that is granted to us, meaning it is by the grace of God. Christ Jesus clothes us with his perfect, complete righteousness, the righteousness that he earned while he was on the earth. And he also fills us with his spirit, empowering us to be righteous as we now live waiting for him. Righteousness is not a burden. It is a blessing. Christ is making us pure and beautiful for him. Now think about this with me. When Jesus returns and the wedding feast begins, it will never be over. That wedding feast is going to last forever. We're going to celebrate with our Lord, our, our groom, forever. Meditate on that this week and let it fill you with excitement and sure hope as you wait for Jesus and let it lead you to worship Jesus with passion. John was so excited about this vision he saw, he was going to fall down and worship the angel who declared it to him. He had to be stopped from doing so because, of course, Jesus is the only one we should worship. So worship Jesus with excitement, with hope, with passion, as you wait for him. Thank you for joining me. Have a great week.